Have you ever wondered why the U.S. is allowing the Mexican cartels to operate freely with Chinese fentanyl coming across the U.S. border and subsequently killing over a million U.S. citizens? Just imagine for a bit, that's nearly the same as all the combat deaths and all U.S. wars combined. Last year, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported overdose deaths hit a new record of 92,476. Hi folks and welcome back to The Storm and Cellar. For all intents and purposes, the U.S. border is not only porous, but open to the Mexican drug cartels. The cartels are leading suppliers of cocaine, heroin, meth, and other illicit narcotics to the United States. Fentanyl has only increased their potency and lethality. Yeah, the cartels are wreaking havoc in the U.S., but the drug trade has also produced massive corruption and violence in Mexico. This has contributed to tens of thousands of homicides each year. Since Mexico launched a pseudo-war on the cartels in 2006, the U.S. has provided it with billions of dollars in security and counter-narcotics assistance. So why hasn't there been success in this war on drugs? Well, apparently, the Mexican government under President Obrador and military generals are either inept at dealing with the Mexican cartels, fearful of them, or they're just a cooperative narco state. Either way, nothing's working to stem the tide of deadly drugs into America. Recently, there's been a push in Congress to add Mexican drug cartels to the terrorist group list. The U.S. State Department is supposed to make that decision based on security threat and national security security interests. So what's the problem? Seems like that train left the station a long time ago. If killing Americans through the drug trade was not bad enough, there also murdered nine U.S. citizens, three women and six children in Mexico, and the State Department has put out warnings to not go there. The Mexican army was defeated recently by the heavily armed Sinaloan drug cartel in a hotly contested eight-hour battle, and the Mexican Air Force couldn't even provide air support to the troops on the ground. The narcos launched simultaneous attacks against more than a dozen Mexican security forces throughout the Culian uh, region, and they've got armored vehicles and everything else. So if any of this is true, what prevents the U.S. military, or as a minimum, the U.S. Special Forces from deploying into Mexico to capture or kill narco leadership, uh, intercept its uh, supply routes, or destroy their labs? It's time for the U.S. to get serious, folks. Not only does the U.S. military need to get involved, but the Mexican elites who supporting the cartels need to be hit financially hard by tying up their assets in the U.S. Military action by U.S. forces is not isolated. During the 1846-48 Mexican-American War, U.S. forces marched through Mexico to Mexico City to defeat Santa Ana's army. In 1983, the U.S. invaded the island of Grenada to deny the Soviets an airstrip in the Caribbean. More recently, without Pakistan's approval, U.S. Navy SEALs conducted an operation in Abbottabad to capture Osama bin Laden. Now, there's claims that the U.S. may have conducted a covert operation in 2022 to destroy the undersea Nord Stream gas pipelines, which feeds natural gas to Western Europe. In my opinion, Mexico is quickly becoming a failed state and definitely a narco state. If the U.S. is serious in defeating this war on drugs that's killing so many lives in America, they have to seriously step up their diplomatic information, military, and economic pressure on Mexico. Military action should not be ruled out. My suggestion is to try diplomatic pressure first, then followed by serious economic pressure to include freezing oligarchs' assets in the U.S. and threatening sanctions on the USMCA, or U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement. If this doesn't work, I'd secure the border with U.S. military and search special operations personnel into the hot spots to gather intelligence, then utilize drone strikes on appropriate cartel targets. To up the ante, I'd establish combat air patrols over Culligan and uh, no-fly zones for the Mexican Air Force, especially the F-5s. Okay, hope you found this uh, video informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what your thoughts are and leave them in the comments section below. So until next time, make sure your takeoff and landings equal.